Hey guys, it's Marissa here from Little House Living. After my last video that I made about um, buying foods from a bulk co-op, I had a lot of questions about the bucket storage that we use. Um, we've been using this method for bulk food storage for, I don't know, at least, at least 12 years now. Um, and it works really well. So I wanted to talk about a couple things first, and then I'm going to show you uh, the buckets that we currently have. So I'm in my new pantry right now, and it's not quite done. <laughs> you can see things aren't quite finished in here. Um, and this wall behind me is going to have a bunch of jars on it eventually. But um, my, most of my buckets are filled. My stock is a little bit low right now. Uh, just because we've been in between moving and stuff, so I'm currently working on slowly building that back up. Um, but I still, I wanted to show you what we have and how we store things and just the different types of food that I keep in buckets. Because um, I think that's one of the biggest questions that I get is what exactly do you keep in buckets besides like the bulk um, pasta and rice and stuff like that. So, um, so I wanted just to briefly touch on the bulk food storage. So a lot of people talk about stockpiling bulk food and um, it's almost kind of like a zombie apocalypse type of thing. That is not why we stockpile. Um, our main reasons behind stockpiling the bulk food is because of um, our proximity to the grocery store. We live a long ways away so if we'd have some kind of weather event we would need to have food here. We couldn't go to the grocery store. Um, I stockpile food because I get it when it's inexpensive and that could mean when it's on sale or if I can buy it in bulk, say like a 25 pound or 50 pound bag is cheaper than buying it by the one or two pounds. Um, so we do that kind of stockpiling and um, or just in case of maybe some income reduction or job loss we would know that we have food here. So those are kind of our main reasons behind stockpiling. I know everyone is different, um, but there's no um, like crazy stockpiling. Uh, we, I know that some people do stockpile with the, the Mylar bags and the oxygen absorbers and all that kind of stuff. Um, personally, we don't do that. We're not stockpiling for um, years and years into the future. I think that if you want to do that kind of prep work, it's better to learn to either grow it yourself or um, have a different method of doing that because I, I just personally don't want to live off of freeze-dried foods. <laughs> so that's kind of our mindset behind the um, food. I guess it's not really stockpiling to me, it's just buying in bulk. So that's that's our mindset behind the buying in bulk. So now I'm going to show you some of my buckets and what we keep in each of them. So I'm going to start over here and this is probably the most common bucket that most people have, at least if you use a lot of flour. And this bucket is filled with gluten-free flour. Um, this is a blend that we like using. I can mix it myself, but lately I've just been getting it uh, in a 25 pound bag because it's less expensive that way and um, it's just easier for the time being. So this is my gluten-free flour bucket. It's about half empty right now, but I do have another bag I need to replace it with. Um, I found that 25 pounds of flour fits in one five gallon bucket. Um, so if I buy a 50 pound bag, I'd need two buckets but I usually buy it in the 25 pound bag, so one bucket is perfect for that. Um, we tend to use quite a bit of flour. I do quite a bit of baking, like muffins and breads and stuff like that. So keeping it in the bucket like this is totally fine for us. If you don't do a lot of baking, you're not gonna wanna keep it in a bucket. Um, it's going to just, like it, the, the flavor isn't going to be as good anymore. So I would recommend just getting the five pound bags and sticking them in the freezer if you don't go through a lot of flour. So that's kind of, that's the bucket we use a lot. This bucket is a little bit different. Let's move so you can see this. So this is my bulk spices bucket. So in here, I, I buy all of my spices and herbs in bulk, and um, just like this. So this is 
even sure. This is oregano, which it looks like we're a little low on. So I buy them in these um, bulk bags. I usually get them by the pound unless it's a lot like, um, you know, powdered garlic I buy by the pound because it's cheapest by the pound. Um, I get all of the spices for Masher and um, yeah, sometimes I get them by the four ounce bag though because like four ounces of oregano is quite a bit. Uh, I made that mistake by buying parsley. I don't know that it's... Oh, it's in another bucket, so we'll see it in a little bit. Um, but they didn't have the four ounces for the parsley, and so I bought it by the pound. And I had no idea how much one pound of parsley is. But um, basically, we have parsley for a really long time. <laughs> so anyway, um, yes, yeah, so this is my bucket of spices. And like I said, I keep all the bulk spices in here. Like this was a pound of basil. That's a ton of basil. We've already used quite a bit of it and it's just, we're going to have basil forever. Um, but this bucket, I always keep all of the bulk spices in, uh, in the bags. And then when I'm ready to get them out, I just put them, here's my little, I just put them in a pint jar and I keep these on the shelf instead of when I need to use a spice, taking it out of the bag. Um, and then when the jar gets empty, like this is the oregano, this is the oregano jar. Uh, I just fill this up and then, like I said, I'm going to need to order some more of this, but um, that just makes it easy and then I keep all of these jars right up here on my pantry shelf and then it's easier to add to a recipe when I actually need those instead of taking it right out of the um, bucket. But yeah, this is my spice bucket. It's a little, it's only... I don't know, about three quarters of the way full right now. So there is some spices that I need to order this month. And like I said, I get all of my bulk spices from Azure. They usually have really good prices. They have organic or not organic. Um, so I will link to that in the notes below. Put that one back. All right, so let's go to this bucket. <clears throat> this mop bucket might be a little bit of a mess. <clears throat> okay, so this is my bulk beans bucket. Um, I used to buy beans by like the 25 pound or 50 pound bag, but I found that we couldn't go through them before they started to get really hard. Um, so now I just buy them by the 5 pound bag and we are able to go through those before they start getting bad and then we can just keep replacing our stock. So I just keep them in the bags that they come in and I stick them inside the bucket. But this whole bucket is uh, beans and other legumes. It's got some, I've got some lentils in here and stuff like that. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm losing my voice this morning. All right, so yeah, so we've got lentils and like garbanzo beans. Um, I wasn't able to get this in the five pound bag the last time I ordered, so I went with this smaller bag, but this is the five pound bag. It's quite a lot of beans. It comes up to right here. So once you, I mean beans at least triple in size once you cook them, so that's quite a bit of beans for us. Um, this one is pinto beans. I've got some black beans in here. I've got some split peas. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Those are the main kinds that we use for beans. The pintos, the black beans, the garbanzos, um, the lentils. And like I said, I just leave them right in this bag and then just stick them all in the bucket and put the lid on. So this bucket is pretty full right now. So we're pretty stockpiled on beans. Now, if I decide to can beans, which I do fairly often, um, and I'll put a link to my video on canning pinto beans, we um, really like them canned because then they're ready to go. You can just stick them on the shelf. You don't have to soak them. You don't have to wait for them. Um, in that case, if I know ahead of time that I'm going to can beans, then I'm going to buy more beans. Um, my little five pound bags won't be enough to use quite a bit for that. So that would be the only exception for me buying more than five pounds at a time. But otherwise, five pounds at a time for us is pretty good. This amount of beans will probably, it probably won't last us a year, um, but it'll, it'll last us quite some time. So that is my bucket of beans. All right. 
Okay, so this bucket is kind of my bucket of random things, and it's also holding my oats right now. Um, the last time I bought oats, I wasn't able to get it in the 25 pound bag, so I just had to go to the bulk food store and just buy it like this. Um, but we do go through quite a bit of oats, so I usually have a full bucket of oats. We use them for like our granola bars and granola and stuff like that. We use them in cookies all the time. Um, so we use quite a bit, a bit of these. But um, so in my next Azure order, I'm ordering another bucket to put the oats in so I can get them out of this one. This bucket is kind of random weird stuff. It is all like the little random flowers that I end up with or, or testing out or just whatever. So like right now I've got a gluten-free pie crust in here. There's some tiger nut flour. We've got some sweet potato flour. Uh, what else? I do have a little bit of popcorn. Um, I usually do not keep popcorn in the bucket just because I only order it in this small five pound bag. I keep it, I'll show you here. I keep it in these jars like this so it's easy for us to get out. Um, but this jar is full right now so I have a little bit here. Back down. Um, what else is in here? We've got some, oh this is a mess. Garbanzo bean flour. This is just kind of my random stuff. Um, random flowers and stuff like that that got some baking powder in here um, that I'm trying out for recipes or that I just don't use very often. I still keep it in these buckets with the lid because since it's flour, you know, it, it's better for it to be in the airtight environment. Um, so that's what this bucket is. This is just kind of my random and like I said right now it's holding on to these oats until they get their own bucket back in there. I believe oats were available this month so I need to try to order the 25 pound bag again and restock our oats so we can make some more cookies. All right this one might be random too. Let's see. I've got some extra beans in here that didn't fit in the bean bucket. This is this is kind of my second bean bucket. Um, I forgot I had these little white beans. Um, and then there's just some kind of random things. The bucket isn't very full at the moment. Um, I've got some of this all-purpose gluten-free flour. We don't like this stuff very much. Um, it's very dense. Uh, this is not the one-for-one one blend. It's just the all-purpose and, and it's filling. Um, but I'm trying to find a use for it and not just toss it. Let's see, there's more baking powder in here and a gluten-free pizza crust. Whoop! So another kind of random bucket, but this actually was my bean overflow um, bucket. And then I do keep some dried potatoes in here as well, like the dried potato flakes. We don't use a ton of um, just regular potatoes. We use a lot of sweet potatoes, so sometimes I keep the potato flakes on hand when I can get them in bulk, um, just to make really easy mashed potatoes, like if we have company or something. All right, let me... All right, this bucket is kind of a mash of stuff. Also right now, um, like I said, it's I need to order a couple more buckets. We kind of run out of a little bit of space. Um, but normally this bucket with the green lid is where I keep all of my extra um, baking liners. I don't really need to keep them in a bucket. I could keep them on a pantry shelf now that I have a pantry again. Um, but when we were moving around and stuff, uh, they were always getting squished. And so I kept them in this bucket. But like I said, now that we're actually settled and in a place again, I could put them on the shelf and have this bucket for some of this other stuff. Right now it is um, sugar storage. So I've got some brown sugar, which I don't use a lot of, but I do have a cookie recipe that's really good. And it uses brown sugar, so I always keep a little bit of that on hand. And then I've got my other sugar. 
Um, we use this for making kombucha, and so I also I don't keep a ton of it on hand, but I do keep some. It's not quite enough to. I don't like to keep sugar in a bucket of its own because it tends to get really hard, especially if you use some of the more um, natural sugars. But they clump, and I just don't like it. So I don't buy very much at one time because we just don't use that much. Um, it's mostly for kombucha, and then I keep it in here. I do. This is another item. Let me grab it here that I keep on my shelf in one of these jars. Um, just easy access instead of having to go into the bucket and then into the bag. So that is another thing that is up there on the shelf. I just have some random things. Okay, so here is what one pound minus all that we've used already over the last year probably of um, parsley looks like. This bag is huge. So probably, unless you use a ton of parsley, don't buy the one pound of parsley. Um, this was really cheap, and so I don't regret buying it. And we use a lot of parsley. We've used quite a bit of this bag already. But um, it is going to take us forever to use this up. So I actually need to keep this out. I was telling my mom that I had too much, and she needs some of it. So I need to take some of that out today. Um, but otherwise, I just have my like my parchment um, baking sheets and stuff in here, which, like I said, just need to come out now since we are we actually have a pantry where I can put these on the shelf. They're not going to get squished. Um, I like these little parchment baking cups. All right. So once I get that out, this will probably be just be my sugar bin instead of um, baking liners. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but these are gamelids, and I just keep them on, this is just a food grade bucket. Um, I get the food grade buckets from Menards because they're cheapest there. They, they say on them that they are food grade, uh, so that's the cheapest place we found them. I get the gamelids from Azure because that's the cheapest place we found those. Uh, you can get them on Amazon or something if you don't have Azure in your area, but um, it's a two-piece lid. And you can see this part kind of snaps onto the bucket, and then this part is the part that twists off. And then in here, you can see that there's a nice seal that's inside of this bucket. So when you twist it down and get it on there really tight, then it makes a nice airtight seal. So you don't have to worry about stuff getting in your food or whatever. It's Definitely the best way that we found to keep their pests out of um, the food and the bugs and stuff like that. Because um, you paid a lot of money for this food, so you do not want bugs in it. And that's why I keep like all those little bags of flowers and stuff like that in these buckets, because I don't want anything to get in them. So if I seal them in the gamelid buckets, um, we don't have any problems with them at all. And then our food lasts longer too, because it's in a nice airtight seal. And um, this is so much easier than having the buckets with the lids that you have to like crank off. Like you just, you know, you can just turn this. And that's all there is to it. Okay, my last bucket down here is the bucket of rice. And this is a pretty boring bucket because rice is all that's in it. Sorry, I'm still getting used to the quirks of my new pantry. Um, this is just rice. This, again, I believe, I don't think this was a 50 pound. Um, I think this was a 25 pound bag of rice. Uh, we will go through this in about a year. So I like to buy it by the 25 pound because it's way cheaper than buying it by the little one pound bags. And I think the last time, I've gotten rice from Azure before. I think the last time I ended up getting it from um, Sam's Club because they didn't have any, so. There's lots of places, and there's my bag of flour that needs to go into the flour bucket. But here is all of my buckets right now. And like I said, I'm getting some more. So uh, this is, I'll probably have two or three more once I finish um, getting them all and then putting things away. I need the one for oats. 
um, and just a couple. I like to have just some extras on hand in case we find something else in bulk that's a good price. Uh, then I can, you know, just have it for when we need it. So these are our buckets and that's what we keep in them. Um, sometimes things change like, you know, I, I showed you I've got these buckets that are really random. These foods for baking and stuff like that. Sometimes I'll pick up something at a surplus store and um, stick it in there. But uh, I pretty much always have the flour bucket, I have the spice bucket, I have a bean bucket, and I have rice. Um, those are our big staples that we that we always keep and then this other stuff is kind of always changing around. But we love the bucket storage method. It's worked really good for us. Like I said, it keeps out the pests. It keeps out um, any you know, bugs, mice, it keeps the air out so I don't have to worry about stuff getting bad too fast before we can use it. Um, you just kind of have to experiment and try what works for you. Your family may not go through a five gallon bucket of rice in a year so you might not need that much. It might make more sense for you to keep it in, um, in the original bags or whatever like we do for our beans. Uh, or maybe you go through more beans than our family does. In that case, you'd probably want to fill up a bucket with beans because they're definitely cheaper if you buy them in the 25 pound or 50 pound bag. But that's just not how we use food and so this is how we've kind of made the system work for us. But if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, I Like I said, we've been doing this for quite a while now, so uh, I will put links to all of the stuff that I mentioned in this video in the notes below and yeah just shout out any questions in the comments. I'll talk to you later guys.